you really want to connect with someone quickly, you need to match their mood. Now, if you have a really bubbly, high-intensity personality, and you're going to be talking with someone who's a little more on the quiet side. No, that wouldn't be you, Sonia. But maybe you once in a while. And I come up to Cindy. Cindy, it's so good to see you. <laughs> How's it going with that card business? I bet it's just awesome. Oh, my gosh. I've just blown her away. Now, she might go, whoa, I don't know about her. But if instead I go, Hi, Cindy, how's it going? You know, a little calmer. But with Vitalia, I might just give her a full body hug, you know, because she is just into that kind of thing. So the idea here is to pay attention to the other person's body language and their mood and to at least, for a few moments, match it so that they will feel like you are in sync with them, that you are paying attention to them. Now, Nicholas Boothman was challenged on his concept of getting people to like him in 90 seconds. A reporter set up a situation where he had Mr. Boothman go into some different groups for a very short amount of time, and then the reporter would go see, well, did they actually like Mr. Boothman? And sure enough, they did. So he asked Mr. Boothman, well, how did that work? How come they all like you? Mr. Boothman replied, well, it's really just human nature. People <coughs> like people who are like them. So, for example, when I went to talk to the policemen, you know, they were all pretty much standing there, sort of leaning on one hip with their arms crossed, not real loud or excitable types. So when I went in there, now, I didn't do it immediately like this. That would have been mocking them. I slowly <coughs> adjusted how I was talking so that I started mirroring what they looked like, and I adjusted my tone down. That way, they saw Mr. Boothman as someone who was like them, and that made him easier to like. Now, I know it can seem a lot in conversation to be listening, to be talking, and to be paying attention all at once. But it is a skill that you can improve. I learned in an improv class an exercise called mirroring. That's sort of based on this whole concept. And what we're going to do in just a moment is I'm going to have you practice this. So this is how this will work. If you could come up, Mark. You can match yourself up in pairs, hopefully with someone that you don't know really well. And then decide one person to be number, I'll be number one. Just pick one person to be number one and one person to be number two. And I will say go. And when I say go, number one will start doing slow motion movements, including facial expressions. And number two will mirror them. So it'll look something like this. Ready? Go. Oh, by mirror, you've got to be like a mirror. So that means you got to use that hand. So now you get the idea. You're going to be like, you're looking in a mirror. So it'll be something like this. And then I'll say switch. And that means you take control and you go first. So you, <coughs> oh. so you get the idea. That's enough. I don't want to do that anymore. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mark. So you get the idea there. You're going to be in pairs. And what we'll do is... I think, I think you guys will be able to quit when I want you to quit. So go ahead, pair up with someone that you do not know really well. Someone nearby, but not someone you came with today. It's at all possible. We didn't write me, so I'll give you a moment to do that. And if there's an odd number, we'll figure it out. Are you going to have a seat on the business partner? Do you have a partner? Does everybody have a partner? Okay, pick someone to be number one and someone else to be number two. Number one, go. Start making motions. Don't try to trick the person. This is a team event. <laughs> See, now conversation won't be so hard after this. Switch. Number two, take the lead.